In this tutorial, we'll explore a technique commonly used in independent and Hollywood feature films to create a single shot by combining the best performances from actors that were captured in different takes. This technique is also used to perfect the timing between actors in one shot. The post-production team of director David Fincher uses this technique often to achieve ideal performances, reactions, and control the screen time taken up by a specific plot point. To achieve this effect, you really want to shoot the scene on a tripod as a locked off shot, or use a specialist camera control rig. Here's a perfect example of the effect we're trying to achieve. I have two layers of video on my timeline, with a take that I want in each of them from each of the actors. I'll show you what I mean. Over in my project panel, I've got a Reaction 1 and Reaction 2. I'm going to double click to open up Reaction 1, and you can see between these markers I've added, we've got the reaction in this actor on the right that we want to work with. Here's my first take. Oh, you got it, Webb. You got it. You just lost it. And that ain't my fault. Besides, I gave you the tools. I gave you the phones. I gave you the scripts. I told you what to do, and I told you how to do it. have the money. But I don't care. It's a pretty muted reaction. And here's the second take. Well, no, but Dwayne, I, I don't have any of the money. Amy, she split and took it all. She, she just took it all. His reaction is much stronger. So we want to take the second reaction from this actor on the right and incorporate it into a single shot with the dialogue from the actor on the left. To achieve this, we have a sequence set up with our first and second reactions on our Video 1 and Video 2 tracks. And I've already set up this sequence so that we've got the audio from Reaction Shot 1 on our Audio 1 track, and we've got that second reaction audio on Audio 2. And I've cut out the audio we don't want from that first reaction shot, so our audio is good to go. The question is, how do we set up the visuals? The first thing we need to do is make sure that our shots are perfectly aligned. I've already put these clips into the sequence so that the timing of the performances is right. But, of course, you could easily change the timing of the performance by trimming or using other kinds of adjustments on the timeline. What's critical is that the visuals of the two shots line up. If I go to my Effect Controls panel and select this mask and delete it, you can see if I now toggle between these two camera angles, everything is perfectly aligned except, of course, the actor's performances. All I need to do is mask this upper video clip in such a way that we keep the performance of the actor on the left and reveal the shot below on video one to see the performance of the actor on the right. I'm going to select this upper video clip and using the opacity mask control, I'm going to draw a mask around that left hand portion of the screen. To make this a little bit easier, I'm going to go to the zoom control in the program monitor and set it to 25%. Then I'm going to use the pen tool to create a free form mask. It doesn't matter if my mask is off screen at the edges, if anything, it will make life a little bit easier and I just need to make sure this mask is positioned so that neither actor's movements will extend outside the mask. And I'm just closing the mask by clicking on the first control point. As soon as I do that, we see the actor on the left from the upper video clip and the actor on the right from the lower clip. And I'll set the program monitor zoom back to fit. By default, when you mask a clip using this opacity control, the mask keeps the selected pixels visible and makes everything else transparent. For this reason, the clip you want to apply the mask to, and therefore the actor whose performance you want to keep, needs to be on the upper track in the timeline. And the other part of the scene that you're revealing needs to be on the lower track for this effect to work. Just to illustrate this, I'm going to turn off visibility for the lower Video 1 track and I'll go to the settings menu in the program monitor and turn on the display of the transparency grid. That checkered area is transparent. You'll notice by default, there's a tiny amount of feathering on the mask path. And that's exactly what we want, just to make sure there's a smooth edge 
between the upper video track and the lower video track. Now, if I turn the lower video track back on in the timeline, we can just play a little bit of this sequence. Oh, you got it, Webb. You got it. You just lost it. And that ain't my fault. Besides, I gave you the tools. I gave you the phones. I gave you the scripts. I told you what to do, and I told you how to do it. Well, no, but Dwayne, I, I don't have any of the money. Amy, she split and took it all. She, she just took it all. But I don't care. In this example, we're blending two different performances but you could use the same approach to blend the color or timing of multiple takes or different parts of the same take. Because the clips are on separate tracks, you can change their relative positions to adjust the timing of a performance. For example, here's the original timing of the interaction between these two characters. I gave you the phones, I gave you the scripts, I told you what to do and I told you how to do it. Well, no, but Dwayne, I, I don't have any of the money. Amy. She split and took it all. She, she just took it all. And here's a version where the lower clip has been shifted earlier. I gave you the phones. I gave you the scripts. I told you what to do well, and no, I told you how to Dwayne, do it. I, I don't have any of the money. Amy, she split and took it all. She, she just took it all. So that's using masks to merge multiple takes into a single shot in Adobe Premiere Pro.